Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Tarone. That's right, there's nothing wrong with eating a little candy once in a while, especially when it's this delicious and beautiful, not to mention based on a recipe that predates the Roman Empire. But above and beyond the great taste, great looks, and historical significance, this recipe is also perfect for those of you that really love stirring. Since we are going to do a lot of that, like for about an hour and a half, but it's going to be totally worth it. Plus, time flies when you're having fun. And to me, and hopefully you, this is fun. So let's go ahead and get started by making sure we have the following things ready before we even start this recipe. The most important of which would be our roasted nuts. And luckily my oven's broken, so I had an excuse to buy some beautiful roasted peeled Spanish almonds, as well as some roasted pistachio, which I definitely have one too many of. And then besides the nuts, we're also going to want to separate two eggs, because about a half hour from now we're going to need some beaten egg whites. And that's going to be a lot easier to do if they're at room temp, okay? And then besides that, we'll also grate a little bit of lemon zest. And that's pretty much it for the stuff you have to do ahead of time. As far as ingredients, that is. Another thing we're definitely going to need to do before we start is get our pan prepped. So what I have here is a plastic lined baking dish, plus a couple pieces of what's called wafer paper, which is optional but does make this so much nicer. So I have two pieces, one that's going to go in the bottom, and then one that'll be pressed on top. And usually it's made out of rice, and sometimes actually sold as rice paper, which can be a little confusing because this is definitely not the same stuff you make spring rolls with. But anyway, we'll talk about that stuff on the blog. For now, once we have all that stuff together, we can actually start the recipe. So let's go ahead and add some honey to a heavy bottom pot. And I prefer something on the lighter side. I'm using what's called a light amber honey. So that's my recommendation, but I'm pretty sure any honey will work. And then to that, we will add a little bit of sugar before grabbing a heavy duty spatula and heading to the stove, where we are gonna place this over low heat and we will start stirring. And we will continue to stir, and stir, and stir, cooking over low heat for 30 minutes. And during that time, our mixture is going to turn from something that's kind of golden and grainy to something paler but much smoother. And while technically we are going to tell you to stir this continuously, I don't necessarily mean that literally. You can stop stirring every once in a while and take a few seconds break. Nothing tragic will ensue. But we really do want to keep it moving pretty much the whole time. And after 30 minutes of cooking on low, your mixture should look something like this. And at this point, we're going to stop and add our egg whites, which, by the way, we need to beat to soft peaks first. So if you are making this with a friend, one of you can stir while the other one does the eggs. Or if you're making this alone, no big deal. Because our egg whites are at room temp, it's only going to take a couple minutes to whip, and our honey mixture should be fine. If you're afraid, I guess you could turn the heat off until you're done. But like I said, it shouldn't be a problem. So what we'll do is we'll throw a big pinch of salt into our room temp egg whites and take a whisk. And like I said, we want to whip those to soft peaks. Don't over whip them. We want to get to what I like to call the shaving cream stage. Okay, so something that looks just about like that. And then what we'll do with our heat still on low is we will whisk those egg whites into our honey mixture one whiskful at a time. So we will add a little bit and we will whisk that in until it disappears and then continue on in three or four more additions until all those egg whites have been incorporated. And as you'll notice, this is really gonna lighten up the mixture. And by the way, I should mention the method we're using here is the very slow, very ancient technique. Okay, the modern method for this is to make a very hot sugar syrup and then simply incorporate that into your finished meringue. But while way, way faster, I much prefer this method, as you will hopefully read about on the blog. So I just wanted to mention that in case you read comments to the effect of, hey, why aren't you using the method that only takes 15 minutes? I have my reasons. So we will continue with the whisk until all our egg whites are incorporated, at which point we want to switch back to our spatula, or in my case, heat proof spoonula, and then all we need to do is continue cooking, stirring pretty much constantly, for another 40 minutes or until done. And one thing I want you to keep an eye on to help determine when that is, you see how when I lift the spatula up, and that mixture kind of forms ribbons that disappear into the surface almost immediately? We're going to keep an eye on that, because as this mixture cooks, a couple things are going to happen. It's going to turn a brighter and brighter white, and you'll notice those ribbons will go from disappearing almost immediately to this stage, where they kind of sit on top of the surface for a couple seconds. And then as you'll see near the end, they'll eventually stay on the surface for like four or five seconds. So that's generally how I can tell we're getting very close. But there is another great test where you just drip a little bit of the mixture in some cold water. And as soon as it cools, you can kind of feel how firm your mixture is going to be when it's done. And what I'm going for is something that feels sort of like a firm clay. So this was close, it was just a little too soft. So I kept cooking and stirring for about, like I said, 40 minutes or so until my mixture looked like this. Okay, check out the ribbons. You see how they're holding their shape? 
and they're staying visible up on that surface for like four or five seconds, that for me tells me I'm done. And once we've determined it's cooked long enough, we will stop and add the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna add a little touch of vanilla, as well as our lemon zest. And by the way, if you want, you could also add some dried fruit into this. You are the boss of making this Tyrone your own. So we'll stir that in, followed by our roasted nuts. And one pro tip here, this is much easier if your nuts are warm. Okay, if we dump in room temp or God forbid cold nuts into this, this mixture is gonna get really hard really fast and it's gonna be very difficult to get into your pan. So I like to reserve the nuts in a warm oven, which makes a mix in here much easier. And as soon as all that's incorporated, we're gonna quickly transfer this into our prepared dish and spread it out and press it down the best we can. And it's probably not a bad idea to switch to a new clean spatula at this point, which I believe I should have sprayed with oil first, but I forgot. That's okay. Nothing that can't be washed and or licked off. So we will press in and spread out that mixture as evenly as possible. And then we'll top that with our second piece of wafer paper, which by the way has a dull side and a shiny side. And I think we want the shiny side up. And then we'll go ahead and we'll give that a little pressing, which I always think I need to put a little plastic down first to protect it from my sweaty hands. So we'll give that a little press. And while we do want to press firmly, be careful, the paper will rip. I kind of tore mine a little right there, but that's okay, when we cut it, no one's gonna know. And if you want, the hand's probably sufficient, but just to be safe, I do like to give it a little extra press with this meat pounder. And then once our mixture has been transferred in and properly pressed, we'll simply leave it out for an hour or two until it cools completely, at which point it will be nice and firm and ready to cut. So I let mine sit for a couple hours before removing it from the pan, which thanks to my plastic wrap came out quite easy, except the plastic had fused to my Tironi around the edges, and I realized it was gonna take about 20 minutes to peel that off. So I got frustrated and decided to just cut it off. So I took a serrated knife and using a nice long sawing motion, sliced through, revealing what has to be one of the most gorgeous sights in all the food kingdom. Look at that, so beautiful. So I went ahead and I trimmed that up and was able to finally remove the plastic. And at that point, you can go ahead and cut this to any shape you want. I'll be going with the traditional square. And by the way, you're gonna see all kinds of tricks online about the best way to cut this. Everybody and their uncle's got their own little trick. But for me, just a long, thin, serrated knife is the best. And while you really don't have to have wafer paper to make Tironi, as you can see, it really does allow us to make beautiful, clean cuts. So we'll go ahead and cut that into perfectly uniform squares. And I did say perfect. So if you have to trim a little bit off the end, that's fine. And then we can go ahead and just discard that piece into our mouth. And that's it, your Tironi is ready to enjoy. And not only does it look like one of the best things you've ever seen, the taste and texture are incredible. I mean, it's basically kind of firm and dry to the touch, and yet at the same time, it's kind of soft, flexible, and chewy. It seems impossible, but it's not. I mean, check it out. Even out of focus, you can tell how good that's gonna be. And as you can see, I think we have the absolute perfect nut to nougat ratio. So anyway, that's it, how to make your own Taroni. This would obviously be great to serve for Valentine's Day. Or better yet, instead of making it for, why don't you make this with that certain somebody? I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better way to spend an hour and a half with your Valentine that will be as pleasurable and as satisfying as this, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.